Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the other side of the coin. So much has happened since our victory against Preston, so it's time to catch up on all the news. It's been funny. It's been very, very funny. Uh, there's been a few reporters that's been saying that Christopher Nkunku is going to be out for three weeks, and then immediately after, there are a couple of other journalists that have been saying this is all false. He should be back for the next game. Now, look, I want to take aside all of that and just talk about the whole injury situation. Before we get to that, and be that part of the conversation is very important. That's why I want to touch about that. I'm not really interested about which journalists got what right and what not because there is a deeper concern here. But before we get to that, breaking, Christopher Nkunku is expected to be out for around three weeks with hip injury. This was coming from this particular brother. Let's have a look at his name. Uh, I think it'll be easier if I do this. Rahman Osman. That's where um, the news was coming from. And then immediately after... Nkunku is not injured and was simply left to rest yesterday due to hip discomfort. A simple preventive rest in view of the important upcoming deadlines for Chelsea. He will be in the squad for the next Blues match, which is up against Middlesbrough in the Carabao Cup first um, first leg. So this is coming from this particular brother named Santi Iona, who has a lot of uh, you know insight when it comes to French players and, and the news from um, that side of the world, from the French side of the world. So he's saying that this was just a preventive thing. Now, look, it may very well be a preventive thing. It may very well be the fact that he only just missed the Preston match um, and he's going to be back for the Middlesbrough. My bigger concern is that I actually wanted him to play against Preston. I want to see this guy build up some match sharpness, build up some match fitness because he's an important player for us. We've not seen enough of Christopher Nkunku this season, mainly because of that long-term injury that he's had. So I need this brother in the second half madly, deeply. I need this guy so to rectify this particular season. So my bigger concern in this whole situation is, do we always need to be a bit cautious in using Nkunku? Can we not unleash him? Can he not play you know, three, four, five games in a row? What is happening with our fitness regime? What is what's going on in our medical staff room? You know, is is anyone properly looking at these players' diets? Are they doing any, you know, running on the sand, running up and down in the stairs, strengthening their muscles, not just in the gym? I think more than anything, they probably need to stay away from the gym and, and work on stretching their muscles out, work on muscle conditioning. I think that's far more important. Christopher Nkunku just came back and he's already having hip problems where he's having to miss a particular match. Look, it's fine. He's just come back from a long-term injury. No problems. We want to be cautious. We don't want to get this guy burnt out again. I fully understand it. But how long do we need to stay cautious? That's my big concern. And the other big concern is it seems to be the same players getting re-injured over and over again. They come back from injury and they get injured again. Nkunku, Lavia, Chukumeka, Ben Chilwell, Reese James, and the list goes on. So the bigger issue is how can we unleash these players? We have to do this research. Chelsea Football Club need to get to the bottom of it because what does it mean? Like, does he start against Middlesbrough or is he going to be in the bench? When can we actually let this player loose? That's my big concern. Let me know what your thoughts are, ladies and gentlemen, because for me, look, which journalist got the information right or wrong, I don't care. The fact is I'm not able to unleash the player because we have to be cautious. That's my issue. That's my issue. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, Chelsea will proceed to soon to activate the recall clause for David Dr. Fofana, as reported yesterday. He's going to leave Union Berlin while Sevilla are close to getting deal done with Chelsea, already approved on players' side. So look, David Dutra-Fofana, another youngster, another youngster that we invested a bit of money on. I think we spent about 15 or 17 million pounds or euros, something like that. Sent him to uh, Union Berlin. Initial parts of the loan looked very good, and then after that, it all sort of dissolved. It all sort of disappeared. The club has not done well as well, so it's not just on him. But we have to have a plan. There's so many players in the same boat, like David Dr. Fofana, Andre Santos, 
So now he's going towards Sevilla, another club that's been struggling this season. And I don't even know whether this is a loan or not. No one has yet to clarify whether this is a loan or whether this is a straight purchase from Sevilla. So another particular player, we, we have to look at what's going on. Last season, we saw snippets of him you know, coming off the bench or at times. I think it started one match for Grand Potter. He looked pretty good. His overall skill set looked pretty good. Still, obviously, you know, underdeveloped, under undercooked, you know, nowhere near uh, able to start as yet on a regular basis. That's why he's gone out on loan. But there needs to be a plan. 100% there needs to be a plan. Again, in this particular news exclusive, Sevilla has approached Bayer Leverkusen for Serda Azmoun in order to understand if possible to sign him and break current AS Roma loan. Sevilla are working to sign two strikers, David Dutra Fofana, deal advancing as priority as revealed. So, look, David Dutra Fofana is most likely moving towards Sevilla. Now, I don't know whether it's a loan, whether it's a full purchase. We'll yet to see that. If it's a full purchase, I'm keen to see how we're actually going to make some profit out of it. At the end of the day, it looks like these are all profit players. You know, they, they don't. I'm not really sure whether they have a clear cut, you know, future at Chelsea Football Club. Let's see. Let's see. David Dutra Fofana, as I said, has some raw ingredients to be a good player, but too many players with raw ingredients, man. Too many players with raw raw ingredients. Next up. Understand Borussia Dortmund have sent official proposal to Chelsea for Ian Martin today. Loan bid submitted. More details to be clarified soon between the two clubs. Martin keen on Borussia Dortmund move. More to follow as negotiations are now at advanced stages. So Martin to Dortmund is going to happen. Good move for him. Not getting utilized at Chelsea Football Club. He is a talented player. I rate him. I wish we'd use him, used him a little bit more, but so be it. It is what it is. I think Dortmund will suit him very much. They play an attacking brand of football. They like left backs of his caliber. They had Rafael Guerrero before this. And um, you know, they, they do play with full backs in advanced role. And I think Martin will cherish being in that particular team. Good move for him. Bundesliga, very attacking league as well. So best believe he's probably going to be sold down the track by Dortmund for 60, 70 million uh, to most likely a Premier League team down the track. Last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, had to talk about this exclusive this happened literally 24 hours um ago just before the match um, that we had tottenham hotspur reached total agreement with red bull leipzig to sign timo verna 27 year old joining on loan until summer plus option to buy believe to be in the region of 15 to 20 million medical as soon as possible and tottenham hotspurs covering full salary so look you know a lot of a lot of the fans in the fan base are feeling a bit indifferent about this particular news look for me I don't have any animosity towards Timo Werner. Timo Werner was actually a very likable character when he was at Chelsea Football Club. A lot of the fans liked him, especially fans that, you know, match-going fans at Stamford Bridge definitely, definitely liked him. Look, there's no denying the fact that his career at Chelsea just didn't work out. The amount of sitters that he missed was incredible. But at the same time, I do have to say, when I say he's a likable character... He never for once sulked when he was down. Every time he just kept on going, getting up and just going on with it. Um, it was def definitely very frustrating, the amount of misses that he was having. And I think he's admitted himself that he feels, you know, uh, directly, uh, I suppose, liable for getting Frank Lampard sacked because he said he had he scored those goals. Maybe Frank doesn't get sacked in that you know, uh, transfer ban season after the season, the second season for Frank Lampard when Thomas Tuchel came uh, came in um, and then took us to Champions League glory. And he was actually a, one of the important cogs in that Champions League glory for us, that particular run. Um, I still remember in the final, it was his run, the darting run, which allowed to open up the space for Kai Havertz, um, who <laughs> at the moment is having a very, very rough time at Arsenal Football Club. Arsenal are out of the FA Cup, by the way. But look... I don't wish him well, Timo Werner. I don't want to see him do well, especially at Spurs, but I just have this feeling. And Postacoglu, he's been able to rejuvenate few careers at Spurs since he's joined in. And the level of football they play, they're going to create opportunities for Timo Werner. Is he going to take the opportunities? Um, I'm interested to see. You know, One eye will be on Timo Werner and um, Tottenham as to see how they proceed, how they progress in the second half of the season where... You know, Son's going to be missing um, in this in this uh, you know, period now uh, through uh, Asia Cup games and um, 
you know, obviously they've got a couple of couple of players out on African Cup of Nations as well with Basuma and uh, I believe Pape Metasa. Maybe he's injured as well. Who knows? So very, very interesting interesting news in regards to Timo Werner joining Spurs. Look, I, I don't have massive animosity him joining Spurs. He's only doing what is best for his career. The the second time, or, you know, the, since he's rejoined back uh, Leipzig, it's not really worked out. In the initial stages, it worked out. Eventually enough, it just fizzled out. And maybe a change of scenery is what Timo Werner is looking for. So that is uh, the latest in regards to all the news, all the Chelsea news and a bit of you know, Spurs news uh, on, on a particular player that was our player. So uh, once upon a time. So I wanted to talk about that. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Smash the like button if you're here for the first time. Subscribe, hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. We'll be back with a live stream tomorrow bringing you the latest in Chelsea news. Until then, everyone, take care and see you.